I'm Chisco Gaming, and I cannot believe that Charles Martel is still this good in 2020. In this commander guide, we're going to help you understand whether or not you should invest in Charles Martel and how long lasting that investment will be. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be reviewing the skills, talents, and 2020 relevance of Charles Martel. Before we start, I do want to give a quick shout out to one of my favorite games, World War Doe. This is a head-to-head -head card collecting battler, and you know I enjoy battling against other players. Link is in the description if you'd like to play with me. We are going to be talking about Charles Martel today, and this commander... I cannot believe that he continues to be good and get better and better over time going into 2020. In today's video, we're going to talk about the following topics. First and foremost, why is Charles Martel getting better and better over time and still amazing in 2020 for Rise of Kingdoms? From there, we're going to get a fresh look at some of these skills. We have learned a lot about why these skills work the way they do and what makes Charles Martel tick and be so gosh darn effective. From there, we'll talk about 2020 builds that we're personally using to defend our own city and in the field. And we'll talk about a little of how you unlock this commander, where you get his sculptures, and the of, of course the optimal order for powering up his skills. Last but not least, you know my favorite is going to be the pairings. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos, or if you prefer, lightly touch the subscribe button. Would love to have you here enjoying those videos with me every single day. 2020, Charles Martel. How have you done it, my friend? Charles Martel is an infantry garrison defense commander. And remember that because that is a big part of his success going into 2020. Now, Charles Martel's active skill gives a shield. And unlike other commanders like Richard I, who do healing, this shield is completely unaffected by the things that reduce healing in the game. Saladin in the game? No problem. Charles Martel doesn't care. His shield doesn't care about that. Alexander the Great? Charles Martel doesn't care about the healing reduction. Ramses? Charles Martel is a friggin' honey badger. He doesn't care about your healing reduction. This is one of the reasons why Charles Martel has held his weight into 2020 is that this skill is not countered right now in Rise of Kingdoms. That is very, very powerful. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that there are other commanders that have entered into the game that do make shield effects, and those shield effects, for the most part, do not stack. For instance, a Charles Martel shield is not going to stack with an Alexander the Great shield, the higher power shield is going to override the other. For most players in open field combat or even defending a garrison, that's really not going to be relevant because you're going to have that shield disappear really quickly. Now, what is also really interesting about this skill and the way that it's worded is that although it says that you increase the damage that you deal by 30% while the shield is active, it actually is a four second duration, 30% damage boost. Turns out having your damage boosted by 30% for four seconds is really, really, really good. This is especially true when you have a secondary commander that does high skill damage because you'll be boosting the amount of skill damage that they do by that cool 30%. In addition, this commander has continued to remain extremely powerful in part because they do all normal attack and counter attack damage. This is very important to remember because there are a lot of commanders that have entered into the game that take reduced skill damage. Guess what? Charles Martel, he ain't doing any of that, all right? He does no skill damage whatsoever. It's all normal attacks and counterattacks. What does that mean? Saladin takes less skill damage. Guess who doesn't care? Charles Martel. Now, he does reduce counterattack damage taken, but still, skill damage reduction doesn't matter. If we look at a couple other commanders over here, boom, Attila, skill damage reduction. Guess what? We're doing normal attacks, baby. For that reason, Charles Martel has continued to kind of hold a lot of value because there aren't as many things that are countering him. One other major way, by the way, to counter skill damage comes in the form of the support tree. And in the support tree, we see there's a lot of things here that mitigate skill damage, loose formation, emergency protection. These things don't have any bearing against a commander like Charles Martel, who's not doing skill damage. 
That is very, very important to remember of Charles Martel. Now, if we look at his other skills, there's more that makes him so freaking amazing. The next thing we need to talk about is health. We have proven that health is one of the best stats in Rise of Kingdoms. Card up in the top if you'd like to see our demonstration of why health is the stat that you should always pick if you have a choice between health, defense, and attack. And that's an over-exaggeration, but only by a little bit. Um, health is one of the most powerful stats in the game, and Charles Martel is boosting defense and also health by a very meaningful amount. Now, we also have the expertise skill, which is giving 5% extra defense, 5% extra health, and the 20% march speed. And it turns out that that march speed makes Martel relevant in the open field. It makes him able to get to garrisons more quickly in game modes like Ark of Osiris, where he enjoys continued presence based on his ability to do extremely well against Attila Takeda, and also because of the march speed enabling him to actually get to wherever he's trying to go. I also very much enjoy the counterattack damage boost on Charles Martel. That anti-swarm technology is really good, again, in game modes like Canyon, in protecting against multi-rallies, in protecting against getting swarmed down in Ark of Osiris. I've even got him on my own wall. That's right, right over here defending my city, which is pretty freaking important to me. So I am definitely putting my money where my mouth is on this one. Charles Martel is a freaking amazing commander and has continued to be so into 2020 for all of those reasons. Now, to be just a little bit more precise about the Attila Takeda counter that I referenced earlier, if you are a garrison captain, I do seriously like the combination of Charles Martel with Constantine as a counter to Attila and Takeda. I also do really like putting Charles Martel with Esong and then swapping to the Esong to punish folks that are surrounding a garrison. You can do a lot of work that way. Charles Martel just friggin' does it all. He slices, he dices, good for rallies in Season 2, good for defense in Season 1 through 4, good in Canyon, good in the field. I'm singing the praises of this commander, and that is because I find myself continually impressed by the areas in which they're good, but I don't want to oversell him as being over-the-top amazing. He's good, and he's gotten better over time. So let's now talk and review each of the skills that Charles Martel has. We've already mostly covered this, so we'll go very briefly. The active skill requires 1,000 rage. It is a 1,200 damage factor shield for 4 seconds. Even although that shield disappears frequently more quickly than the 4 seconds as you fight in combat, the 30% damage boost will last for the entire 4 seconds. The second skill is giving you 15% defense and 15% health. The third skill is giving you a watchtower defense, which is only relevant for defending your city, and also 10% garrison attack. Why is that pretty decent? Although attack is the stat that I'm least interested in. Attack applies to all troop types, so if you're defending your city, this is very, very good. Final skill is 30% counterattack damage boost, and that expertise skill is boosting defense, health, and march speed by 20, well, defense and health by 5% each, march speed by 20%. Given that base of skills, let's talk about the talents that I would highly recommend you use with Charles Martel, and there are an astonishing amount of builds. If you are defending a structure you think will be swarmed, in this case, I'm defending my city, I particularly like this build where I've gone all in on Know Thy Enemy, card up in the top where we've proven that this is a very exceptional talent. If you're not so much worried about defending your city or that your city is going to get swarmed or multi-rallied, then a build that I do really like is something that is more flag-oriented. This is actually an anti-Attila Takeda build because it doesn't take skill damage reduction right over here in the form of loose formation. This, I think, is really good to pick up if you're in a, a game mode like Ark of Osiris, but if you're countering Attila Takeda specifically, then you can skip loose formation, you can skip impregnable, and get a good bit more efficiency against Attila Takeda. The downside of that is if you get multi-rallied, oh boy, are you going to wish that you had that skill damage reduction. I think this is a really solid garrison build for a flag, specifically countering Attila and Takeda, but is also good in other contexts. Again, go in and get loose formation and impregnable if you think that your flag is not going to get multi-rallied and you're more concerned about skill damage than things that do not deal skill damage. Getting a look at a, another build that we have that is very intense for 
an anti-swarm garrison build. This is more of an Ark of Osiris build right over here. It does have an anti-cav flare and iron spear. We've taken Know Thy Enemy to reduce the amount of damage you take when getting swarmed, and also gone for King's Guard, which is just an astonishing boost to your stats. 3% for all troop types and all stats. That's attack, defense, and health for three points is honestly amazing. The rate you're getting there is astonishingly good. I really like this build. If the thing that you're doing is Ark of Osiris and you're concerned about getting swarmed in that game mode. Now, there are a lot of other builds that we can get a look at. To show you those builds, I'll just pull them up on Richard the First because we still need to talk about game modes like Sunset Canyon. Now, Richard the First has the exact same talent trees, so it's a one-for-one -one relationship here. You can use this exact build, and I would recommend this in a game mode like Canyon. Um, I do find that cavalry are a lot less prevalent in this game mode, which is why I've ignored Iron Spear. But if there are a lot of cavalry in your Canyon meta, drop the points in Desperate Elegy and put them into Iron Spear instead. This is very exceptional for Canyon, and is a good build in the open field as well, if and only if... You're not worried about march speed, but most players should be very concerned about march speed. If what you wanted to do was battle in the open field with Charles Martel, I just reworked this build right now in order to showcase what I would highly recommend. I do think going all in on the infantry tree for the march speed and getting a bunch of health, a bunch of health, and a bunch of march speed over here is very, very solid. We've also gotten the march speed in the defense tree, which is going to let you maneuver around the battlefield more quickly. Master Armor, and by the way, Burning Blood, are top tier talents. Never skip them. They are astonishingly good. We've also gone down to loose formation to reduce skill damage taken. Super relevant in open field brawls. And of course, we've picked up no weakness, 1.5% less damage taken. That skill damage, normal attacks, counterattacks is freaking outstanding. I love that. It is an exceptional talent to go and pick up. Those are the builds I would recommend in 2020. There are, of course, a few other variations that you could do, but those are the primary builds that I find myself using on Charles Martel. Now, when we talk about unlocking this commander, he is available both in gold keys and from the Mightiest Governor event. Now, this makes it really interesting to decide whether or not you're going to invest in Charles Martel. Why is that? I'm just going to show you something that I keep talking about every time I talk about gold keys, which is that you're going to keep getting these commander sculptures for Charles Martel long after you've expertised him. I used a lot of universals on Charles Martel early on in the game, and now I'm sitting on 521 extra sculptures of Charles Martel that deliver me absolutely no value whatsoever. So look, there's obviously a balance here when you're investing in a legendary commander, determining whether or not you're going to use your universals on that commander, especially if you can get them from a gold key. For that reason, I think most people should not be investing in Charles Martel until they've invested in other really cornerstone commanders like YSG, who comes from the Wheel of Fortune, and after his wheels have gone by, you're only going to get him maybe in the future from Card King, and you have control of that. A commander like Richard I, who will lose some value over time as healing counters enter into the game, but guess what? He's still really quite exceptional in many game modes, and you only get him from the wheel, so you don't have to worry about wasted sculptures with him. Alexander the Great, another commander I would consider to be much higher priority, those are commanders I think you should focus on first if you're interested in investing your Universal Legendary Commander Sculptures. But hypothetically, if you were further along with your Charles Martel and you wanted to work toward expertising them, where would you put your Universals? And again, card up in the top, if I haven't convinced you yet that Universals on Gold Key Commanders is not a great idea until you're very close to expertising them, okay? So check out that video at the end of this one if you're looking for more detailed explanation on that. If you are going to use Charles Martel in the open field, my strong recommendation would be to take the first skill to five, take the second skill to five, then go one, one. Why is that? This skill is gonna level up at a slower rate for the first couple of skill ups, and then at a much better rate, you get like an extra percent of health and defense each for each skill that you get for the fourth and fifth skill ups. So I like and much prefer if you can max the first two skills. This is an infantry based skill. It's not gonna help as much for defending your city, which is an activity I would recommend him for at 5511. He'll be great for that. Um, however, 
in the open field, the 30% of stats is kind of a big deal. It's kind of a big deal, and if you're using him in the open field and in garrisons, I like maxing the first skill, always do that first, then max the second skill, then unlock the next two skills by taking him to four stars, and you hope from that point on that your skills land up over here in the fourth skill, which will be relevant to you both in garrison and open field so that you can get a little bit more value for every sculpture that you put onto this commander. And eventually, once you are closer to expertise, you can consider using those universals. There are a couple situations where I think that would be super relevant to do. If you're in your first or second season of KVK and you are one of the garrison captains, then yes, I think that's a good investment as a legendary commander to use for that activity. If you are approaching season three of KVK and you're going to need to deal with Attila and Takeda, that is going to be a great time to expertise Charles Martel, although between expertising Charles Martel and Constantine, I think that Constantine is a better choice. Stall that activity of investing in Charles Martel with your universals for as long as you can so that you can use gold keys for longer and longer. Now, with all of that said, it's important that we talk about the pairs for Charles Martel, and there are some great pairings available. First and foremost, let's talk about the infantry pairings. A natural pairing is, of course, going to be Charles Martel and Richard I. Optimally, Richard I will be the primary. That way, when he heals, he will make the shield effect of Charles Martel be greater because there will be more troops in the march. Continuing to the next infantry commander, Alexander the Great and Charles Martel are honestly exceptional. The march speed across these two commanders is bananas. And for the most part, the shielding effects aren't even going to overlap. They don't stack, but you take enough damage and you know, player versus player, open field combat, that you really don't need to worry about the stacking nature of shields and the fact that these two shields, they're not going to stack card up in the top where we've proven that. However, they are going to be really effective in making this march last for a very long time. The next infantry commander that we've got to talk about is Guan. Guan loves the march speed. Guan loves the tankiness offered by Charles Martel. And the two make a very natural pair. There is even a small chance if you're generating enough rage due to having a Joan of Arc nearby that you will get your lone rider to proc from Guan Yu. Uh, that's the expertise skill, giving 15% extra skill damage when he gets a shield for three seconds. Looking in at a few of the other infantry commanders that are in the game, one you could consider is Leonidas. I haven't seen the combination of Leonidas and Charles Martel in the open field or otherwise. Maybe it's good. I just haven't seen it. And I don't think that the shields will stack. So I feel like there's some anti-synergy here. Also, Leonidas is looking for a commander that can do some of these debuffs, which Charles Martel, for the most part, really isn't doing. Um, in fact, wholly isn't doing. Of course, we would be remiss to not mention Constantine as an exceptional pairing, as an exceptional pairing for Charles Martel. These two together are amazing in the open field. Use Constantine as the primary for the support tree, since I think you get a little bit more benefit for that activity. However, if you are in a garrison capacity, I think Charles Martel is the better primary, Constantine secondary. You can even use that to defend against Attila Takeda, and this insane stacking of health across these two commanders is very, very powerful for defending structures. Now, getting a look at the commander pairings that are non-infantry, there are actually many that work very well. First and foremost, at the legendary tier, YSG secondary to a Charles Martel primary is totally gangbuster. You boost the damage of your YSG, and like I said, my money where my mouth is, this is the pairing defending my own city. The next non-infantry pair that you could get a look at is going to be Frederick I. Now, I don't love these two as a pair, but boosting the damage of Frederick I is pretty relevant, um, and the shielding and healing will give you a lot of sustain. The march speed on Charles Martel will help you get around the battlefield. The thing you're missing is the rage engine, and that's what Freddy really wanted. Looking in on Julius Caesar, I think it's a pairing you could do for a huge amount of tankiness, especially from this skill over here. Reducing the amount of damage that you take will be very, very effective. I'm not entirely sure if the damage boost across the two commanders actually stacks. In fact, I don't think it does. I think the damage effect will be replaced by Julius Caesar's. However, I would not recommend these two in general as a pair. 
Continuing on, I think Mehmed is a fine secondary. Uh, you protect the Mehmed, hiding him behind the Charles Martel in the open field, and bring all infantry, do a boatload of damage. Very solid combination. For garrison commanders, and there are a bunch that I think are going to be super relevant, I do like Yi Sun Shin and Charles Martel as a pair, potentially for defending your city. I don't exactly think there's a boatload of synergy, however, with Artemisia. She really cares about archers. He really cares about infantry. If you're defending your city, that's less of an issue, but for other garrisons, I don't think that's a thing. I think Theodora paired with Charles Martel could be an interesting counter to Attila Takeda. That is something that will require some testing to prove, but if you're defending your city, they're gonna be gangbusters. And in a similar vein, Wu Zetian with Charles Martel, defending structures or your city, is going to be very good, although I think you can do better than Wu Zetian as a secondary for most garrison situations. Looking now to the epic commanders, let's start with the epic infantry commanders. Obviously, Sun Tzu is going to be a completely gangbuster pair in the open field or for defending your city. Use them together, get value, and you can feel great about it. In the open field or for defending your city, Ulji Mundok is a solid pair. Ulji is going to be doing some debuffs to the opponent, uh, which is good. It's not amazing, but it's good. I would rather you're generating rage, which is what Sun Tzu is doing. And you have some anti-swarm technology. The combination of Charles Martel and Olji Mundok offers some very, very solid anti-swarm. Looking in to the non-infantry pairings, there are actually a few good ones that you can do. I think that CPO with Charles Martel is decent, but not amazing. In the topic of amazing, I'll say that Joan of Arc primary with a Charles Martel secondary is very good in a game mode like Canyon. The reason is that Joan of Arc uses the support tree to generate lots of rage and to fire off that shield from Charles Martel very frequently. Using them on your front line can go very, very well. If you are battling in a KVK context in the open field, I would recommend Charles Martel primary with Joan of Arc secondary. And the reason is that you want to hide the Joan of Arc behind the Charles Martel so that you don't advertise that you're giving this massive buff. You want to shield that, hide that, pun not intended, behind the Charles Martel, because people are much less likely to attack a Charles Martel than they are a Joan of Arc. Continuing on, Boudica and Charles Martel is a great pair. Boudica offers sustain and rage reduction to the enemy. Charles Martel offers damage and sustainability and mar march speed. Great combination for the open field in the early game. Similarly, I do like the Osman pairing. Charles Martel is going to elevate the skill damage dealt by Osman, which is great. However, I do wish that there was a bit more of a rage engine between the two of them. And for that reason, I say they're okay, but not stupendous. All in all, I'm going to say that Charles Martel has really impressed me and continues to get better and better over time. But I truly, deeply want to caution you that if this is a commander you're considering investing in, that you really pump the brakes if you're in the early game, because you're going to have a lot of opportunity and a lot of gold keys over time to get those sculptures at some point. I don't know exactly when that will be for you, depending on your velocity of legendary commander sculptures. If it's 200 sculptures away, 300 sculptures away, or 400 sculptures away to get to that expertise skill, that you would consider using those universals. But I think that if you're going to use universals, I just want to imprint on you this right over here, 521 wasted Charles Martel sculptures. Because I've already expertised him. Now, that's not really a waste, right? Because I used him in combat and I got value from it. But remember, if you've got other commanders that you still haven't done, like YSG or Alexander the Great or even Richard I, where you can control the rate of flow of those commanders, Constantine as another great example of a commander that I think is a higher priority, pump the brakes on using those universals on Charles Martel. Card up in the top if you'd like a more detailed guide on what I think is the most optimal legendary commander investment order in Rise of Kingdoms for 2020. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, throw a like onto here to show your support to me and the channel and the advice that I've given. I sincerely hope you'll use it on the battlefield to gain an edge on your enemies and to win in war. Consider subscribing to the channel for more Rise of Kingdoms videos and guides, including 2020 Commander Guides. I'll have a card up in the top for that playlist. If I haven't already run out of cards, maybe I'll have to make some choices here. And as always, there are links in the description if you're looking for more information on topics that we've covered on the channel. Until next time, you have fun.
smashing the kingdom.